It's one o'clock. So uh, welcome to the first uh, feature session in the coding and development track. And uh, let's all welcome Pierre Pierre PHP core developer, who works, well, it says he works with the old dark force. Maybe he can explain it, but probably you all know. <laughs> um, Pierre is here to um, talk about uh, one thing especially. So there's a lot of very successful um, PHP products and a lot of communities, but and we all care about the quality of the language PHP, but there's not much contribution from those communities like ours, Drupal, or also Joomla, whatever, that try to improve uh, the language PHP itself. And Pierre is here to convince us how easy that is. So I don't want to steal more of your time. <laughs> Please go ahead. <clears throat> Oh, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. So, uh, thank you for the introduction. So, my name is uh, Pierre Joie or Joye, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are coming from. And uh, I work mainly as a PHP core developer working with Microsoft. That's what I call the old dark force because I think the new one is the northern one <laughs> with a nipple or something like that. And uh, I work mainly on PHP itself and everything around PHP. MongoDB, Couchbase, uh, or more known as CouchDB now, and the Azure stuff, for example, for cloud and so on. And uh, I work like since 14, 40 year, 14 years or something like that on PHP, or project like Perl, if you heard about it, or the older, older one. So yes, that's what I'm doing. Also, portability fan, what uh, he tried to say is, I'm trying to make all these tools working well on every single platform be Linux, PSD, Solaris, or Windows, or Windows Azure, and, and, and so on. If you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me on Twitter or email. Usually, I'm faster to answer on Twitter than mails. OK, so I will just begin. Before I, I always do that in my talk, here's a couple of questions. I think you all use PHP. That's a, 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 pretty, a pretty sure thing. Which PHP version do you use, if I may ask? PHP, or who used PHP 4 still? The door is behind you. If you <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who used PHP 5.2? OK, 5.3? Hey, that's very good. 5.4, maybe? Very good as well. So for the record, PHP 5.3 is two times faster than 5.2. And 5.4 is two times faster than 5.3. And 5.2 is dead for the few ones. We will still use 5.2. So we don't do any, more, any longer security fixes or whatever else, only distributions. But almost all new distributions are using now uh, 5.3, and the next Debian will have uh, 5.4, for example, as well. That's also a small miracle, by the way. I will explain in the first slides why. And who uses Windows as well? Oh, quite a, co a couple of guys. No, there is more as than usual. That's pretty good. Linux? <laughs> OK. Who uses cloud already? Amazon, Asia, one, two, and all the cloud of providers or something like that? No? OK. And who knows Vagrant or Vagrant? Or who use it? OK. Who plans to use it in the next couple of months or next years? OK. I think Vagrant is one of the next big thing in cloud computing and testing and virtualization. Take a look at it. It's backgroundproject.org, I think, if I remember correctly. So um, the first thing about PHP for, I will just make uh, three parts in my talk, or two parts in my talk. The first one is talking about the PHP project and how you can get involved. And the second part, more technical stuff, how to debug and contribute and so on. For years, we have been a very bad reputation from being some kind of assholes or something like that, if I may say this word, but we were like that, so, and I'm talking about myself as well. So, slow release or no release at all for months or years, and uh, insecure and all these kind of things. And all these things were pretty much true. And three years ago with uh, Lucas Smith, maybe you will hear about him, about him because he's working a lot on Symfony and CMS or CMF. And a couple of other core developers were talking about making the PHP projects better, the PHP organization better to ease new developers and new contributors to join us. The first thing we did is to create an RFC process. Who heard about it already? 
Okay. The idea of IFC process is exactly the same as what you, you have on the W3C, for example. Everyone can write one. And the next best thing is each IFC are voted on. When once it's accepted, it will get in the core or get in the, in the, in, in, in the given project without objection. Nobody, no more single person can object to get a patch or feature in PHP if, if an IFC was accepted by the core developer and the communities. And the short delay to get in a release. For example, you can see it in 4.5. Almost every, every feature we have in 4.5 was developed one year before the release. We are, we are working now on 5.5, uh, 4.5, sorry, 5.4. Uh, <laughs> we are working now on PHP 5.5, and every single feature you will see has been developed or implemented since 4.5, uh, 5.4. Oh, you can translate it. I will make it wrong. So, yeah. So and okay. So the PHP.NET members can vote. Be it if you are a documentation writer or a core developer or Pickle or Perl, you can vote on it. And the communities can vote. That means as soon as you are part of a open source project, an active contributor like Drupal or Typo3, Symfony, whatever else, even WordPress, you can do. You can uh, ask for. Uh, to be uh, one of the representatives of this project. This is a hard step because we are moving to a way where we are listening to our users. I mean, what, we are, what our users are looking for, or which features you would like to get for the next PHP version. The next thing we did after that is to have a release process. That means we do a lot more releases. Maybe you have noticed it, uh, like four, five, five, four. We have already six releases for that. We, are, we just released uh, four, uh, five, four, six. We are working on uh, four, five, four, seven now. And uh, we do something like every month a new release with security fixes or small bug fixes and so on. The next thing is we, are, we do a yearly release for major version with new features like five, four, five, 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 six, and so on. So the next five, five, five will be around, I think, uh, early next year with a lot of cool features. If you have a question about uh, what features are coming, I can uh, answer this question after the talk and so on. But I think there is a lot of things that will be useful for Drupal 8. And you can take a look at the IFC. Everything is described there, how it works. Which we, don't do, we don't allow BC breaks, for example, anymore between small releases and so on, or even between one five point something and five something plus one. We don't allow any breakage inside it. And we have now, in the security part, a lot of uh, Linux distribution uh, active in the security mailing list. It's a private list to discuss security issue. We have uh, Microsoft people involved as well. So this is a hard step for us. We are now trying to get also projects like Drupal, core developers from Drupal to get involved as well in this area, because many, many security issues are found using projects like, like Drupal. Indeed, they are the targets. So. We have to figure out a way to work together to fix these issues. And now a little bit history about how, since three years, before we were like almost uh, old guys, the guys you always see at conferences and so on. And now we have, this is a top contributor in this, time, in, in this period. This is a guy working, he was working for the Yahoo in China, I don't remember the name. Uh, and the two guys on the right, and, uh, they don't matter anymore, but uh, you have Gustavo and Anatoly. That, th they are the top five contributors in this period. I mean, with uh, amount of commit, about of new, about amount of new features. And is in this uh, top five, three are new. They are younger than one year inside the project. Uh, Anatoly is working in my team as well. So, I mean, he works with me uh, with Microsoft. I mean, just for the story to make my, my colleagues happy too, two of the top five contributors are working with Microsoft on, on every single platform. That's also a kind of uh, something was almost impossible five years ago. So in short, you have no more excuse. You can contribute very easily. If you don't know what, how or what to contribute, there is always a nice U, uh, URL here, bugspeech.net random. Just select a random bug, <laughs> which is still open. There are quite some funny bugs. So if you're feeling boring or something like that, you can always do that. You should do that for, for, for the Drupal bug tracker as well. 
And one of the part is you don't have to be a C developer and so on. You can contribute very easily to the documentation online without knowing too much of Docbook and so on. I will just show you a demo now. That's a quick screenshot here, but I will. I don't want, I, I won't save what I'm doing, but if I have a network. Okay. Trying the non. Anyone with a laptop can access it already or not? Edit.php.net or it's only me? If not, I will simply switch it. Uh, Okay, so I have, ah, only slow. Please stop to look at YouTube for a few seconds. Oh, it's working there, but not here. Ah, okay. So you ca as you can see, you can sign in with Facebook. Don't worry, we don't take your personal data and whatever else, we don't sell it, or not officially. You can sign it with uh, Google as well, or you can request an account, or you can log in with uh, your VCS, that means Git, uh, Git account or version account or whatever else. Uh, okay, so, and now you have here the online editor. You can just select the part you like to edit. Make you, oh. Ah, okay, I know why it doesn't work now. I have to leave the Okay, I will simply show the screenshot then. So you can select uh, the parts you, because it's still loading the page, I was not uh, able to load it. You can select the part you like to edit. If you see, for example, a little grammatic mistake or typo or whatever else, you can edit online, save it. It will be online within one hour. <coughs> there is moderation. I mean, you, you won't put your favorite URL inside the documentation, but it's a pretty easy way to, to contribute to the, to the PHP project, to document. To document it. Did anyone know, uh, heard about it before? Hear about it before or not? About this little project? No? Okay. So I hope to see many documentation contributions in the next couple of weeks or days or, to, or this afternoon. The next big step for to ease contribution is the move to Git. Who knows what Git is? I think everyone. Okay. Who use Git already? Okay. Everyone using Drupal should use Git anyway. Drupal moved to Git as well, right? Yeah. And just a little ad for, for a good friend who spent months to work on that. He migrated, almost still working on it. It's David uh, Soyapawa. He, he did the migration from subversion to Git and the GitHub mywall. That means you don't have to go on gitphp.net. You can use uh, GitHub directly to contribute uh, to PHP. You can do a fork, pull request, and, and, and so on. Who knows what a pull request is on GitHub? Or I mean, OK. Uh, if I have time at the end, I can make a small demo how we can do it. This, the thing is very easy. You see the little fork button over on the right? I hope it's big enough. When you, you, when you go on, um, on the PHP uh, SRC project on GitHub, you just do a fork. You do a clone locally, you do your modification, commit it, push it, and you, so you can directly in, on, on the GitHub web page do a pull request, and we will see it directly. So, and we can merge it normal, usually within one, a couple of days, what you have done will be merged directly if you have write a test and so on. Who would, or, by the way, who already contributes to PHP? Just to see if this, thank you. <laughs> Only one, so this talk makes sense. <laughs> Okay, any question until now? 
I mean, about the IFC or whatever else. Uh, for PHP itself? Or no. I try to convince them to do that, but they love Dogbook. I don't know why. But the documentation, documentation team uh, used Dogbook since years because we have many, many other formats. But now Markdown is getting much better, especially as, uh, thanks to, to GitHub. You have a lot of good tools to convert from Markdown to PDF or HTML Windows file or Windows help files and so on. But I don't think it will happen anytime soon because we have a lot of documentation on Dogbook. You can, if you take a look at the repository, it's like, I don't, I don't remember, two gigabytes of docs uh, in, in Dogbook. Any other question? Okay, so, uh, let's see if I'm in time. Yep. Let's talk about the core. Um, I will make first a small introduction how PHP works internally, just to explain a bit, a bit the structure, how a request works, very simplified. Who knows already about that? I mean, oh, Derek knows that. What a surprise. <laughs> and who else? Okay, so it may make sense. It's a very simplified version, so it's not, don't take it as uh, that's how PHP works. I switched some parts just to make it easier. The first thing is when you get uh, a script from a web server or from the command line, it goes, it goes through CLI or Apache or IES and so on. The file will get compiled. If there is no fatal, no syntax error or whatever, whatever else, it will, it will go to the execution process, and then you see what what happens. For example, if there is a function call, it goes back to the execute loop for a function call, or if you have included a file require or include or the ants, include ants and so on, the compile method will be called again. That's how it works without any opcode opcode cache. I will talk about the opcode cache later. Uh, on the next uh, next slide. If you use APC, uh, WinCache on Windows, or eAccelerator accelerator and so on, that's the process how it works. So when a script com comes in, first uh, the opcode cache will check if we have already that in the cache, this file. Could be a request or the URL and so on. If not, it will call the then compiler, get so the symbol table, so the, the, the code table, and store it in the cache, and then send to the execution uh, module, and so on. And the same app will happen if you do a require or include. It will check if, if it's already in the cache and do the same process again. You can t uh, see it pretty easily uh, if you do a little C debugging to see how it works and so on. That's also why um, if you find a bug and you are using uh, APC or another op cache, just try to to test this bug again without the opcode cache to be sure there is no uh, interference between the two. The same if you use xdebug and so on. I hope everyone uses xdebug here. Who uses xdebug for his development? Okay. You can thank Derek Rettans here. He is the main author of, of xdebug. Okay. When is it? Oh, okay. It's on the planning, yeah. yeah. Okay, that could be a very interesting share sign because I think every single Drupal developer working seriously with PHP on Drupal should have a clue about how to debug and profiling PHP with Xdebug, be on Windows or Unix. And, and now, I will just make a small demo. This is a small, I don't, I don't, I first thought about using Drupal to make my demo when I thought, okay, it could be maybe to take too much time to figure out the bug inside. So I just took a very simple script and so everyone has to understand what this script is doing. Who does not? Okay. So, and I will use another extension from Derek to explain what an opcode is. Okay. So if you, oh, again this crap. Oh. So oh, sorry. Okay, so I have to leave PowerPoint and move. I have to report this. I, 
I'm, I'm playing a risky life. I've installed Windows 8 and the latest version of Office. Uh, it's too small, huh? Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you don't, you don't what? Ah. You don't have to. It's pretty, okay. So, it's called v VLV, what you see over there. Over there. Uh, you can download uh, from uh, Derek Retton's website or on GitHub. And we have the DLL for Windows on windowsphp.net download as well. So, let's see if I can now. Okay, uh, it's too big now. <laughs> we just make the font too smaller. Fourteen, you say? Okay, so it should be better. Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, we can still read it. Exactly. So we see the first part is the assign of the value of one, two, three, four, five, six to the A. Then we have the function call, substring. If you call a user land function like your own function, you have another call for that. It's called uh, call user land, uh, user func. And then the echo and the unset var. And the return is the last exit. That's all of you to see, for example, if you have a small script to figure out pretty quickly which part of the engine you are using in your script or, and so on to compare how it works. It sounds a little bit uh, complex, but it's very easy to understand. And then you can find out where this code is inside the engine. So that's for the VLD part. Now I will go back to. Okay, the screenshot for those who did not see the. <laughs> and a little explanation about the structure of the PSP source code as well is what you have in the core. That means everything you don't activate in a, inside your PHP and so on is what. A, I would call or what we define as a PHP core core or the main part of PHP. That's what we have in Zend, the SAPI. SAPI, it's Apache, Handle, Handler, or IES, FastCGI, CLI, and so on. And all the extra, there is a couple of things you cannot disable. At least you cannot disable them on Unix. Like XStandard, XDate, SPL, PCRA, Reweg, and Reflection. Uh, SPL, for those who don't know, it's a standard PHP library. It's a kind of like where you have the iterators and so on. For the rest, I mean, it's, it's very well known. You have bundled, bundled extensions like zip, in YNTL, and so on. And then you have other extensions coming from Pickle, GitHub, or, or something else that you, you could buy, build or install using apt-get, or I don't know why it works on Mac, but uh, on, on Windows, simply download the DLL and so on. Uh, quick question. Uh, who knows about YNTL? ENTL. Okay, I think if you, uh, Symfony use it uh, a lot as well. So, and for Drupal 8, I think it will, they will rely on that as well for internet synchronization, localization. It's one uh, very good Unicode support. It's a, it's a, um, an extension working with the ICU library. The ICU library is one of the IBM project. Now it's an open project for Unicode support. They deal with all the data management and localization and so on. And a couple of people, Gustavo, Stas, um, Derek too as well, I made some a couple of things in there as well, have made a very, very good job to integrate ICU inside PHP. So if you are working on this part of Drupal, take a look at that. Take a look at how it was done in Symfony, in Symfony 2.1 and later. Uh, that's a pretty good stuff. 
are much easier that, uh, than get text and so on, for example. And one thing is very easy, uh, I will get as well, you know, if you don't know where a function is defined, indeed you can use grep or whatever, it's always easy, but sometimes there is a good tool called LXR. I hope I have a net connection, if not, I will show the screenshot. Cool. So you select the project you want, and let's say I don't rem uh, we are looking for, I will explain what I'm doing now, but you don't know where is substring, the user learn function substring, because if you look for substring, you will find all the C1 as well, so it doesn't, it's not very helpful. Or all one you have in the test and so on. But one way to figure out a function is, if I remember correctly, if not, David can help me. You can cut the brackets. And we have less result usually. And you, you can use regex, regex and so on to, to define a, a smaller chart. And what I'm looking for is for the C file, string C, for substring. Ah, uh, this one. So we can find here, and when you find it, can you read it, or I think I can, okay. I can, if I can do it bigger, I think. Okay, so. Okay, so now we have found, uh, but the network is too slow, so. But we have found using, uh, So we have found where the string function is. So, oh. Still not loaded, but we, we find it when you have a PHP function, PHP underscore function with the name of the function, that's the, the name you have in the user line, user line when you use a script, for example. So, long screen. Okay, I have to fix this stuff for, for PowerPoint, it's a pain in to always do that. Okay, so, and so you can very easily find where is it, that's this part, PHP underscore function. At least from almost all functions, there is a couple of uh, functions which are in Zen and use something else, or um, operators are not defined like that, but that's another story, we may uh, talk about that you know, uh, after, or if you have question afterwards. And one of the main issues, uh, uh, many of the people I met are trying to find or figure out are memory leaks. For example, uh, you are, especially with big application, you are wondering why it uses so much memory, why it keep, keeps growing, I don't know how to fix it, or I don't know if my script has a memory leak and so on. So I will try to show you how to see a memory leak inside a, uh, a small script. I will keep using the script I showed uh, you before, the substring, uh, the substring one. And this is the command. Who knows about Val Valgrin or Valgrin? Or do we say it? I don't remember. So I think every C developer knows it. And for all the developer, all the non-C developer, it looks like a bit uh, like Chinese, Chinese or very hard to understand, but it's a very easy tool. I mean, it's very easy to use. And I will just show you a little demo now. And I will show first demo on Unix and then on, on Windows using another tool than Valgrind, but. So, I uh, just compiled a fresh uh, checkout of uh, a clone of PHP uh, this morning. As far as I remember, I already did a leak somewhere. Yes. Bitte? We don't have leaks. Do we? <laughs> no. So are a couple. There is one thing about memory leak I won't explain today, uh, but I gave at the end of the of the deck, there is a resources page, and there is a link to our wiki explaining how the memory management works in PHP. 
because that would be a talk on its own, garbage collection and so on. But this, this page explains that, explains this very, very well. It's been written by uh, Lawrence, the Chinese guy I showed you before. He wrote a very good explanation how things are, uh, works inside PHP. So you can understand how, when you create a variable, when it will be destroyed and so on and so on. So I just removed the leak. Who knows how to compile PHP, by the way, or I have to show it? Who does not know how to compile PHP? Okay, I just make a quick. Uh, the easy part is to just call, in this case, I can make bigger this time, I think. Easier to read like that, or okay? The easier way, when you test a core feature, like not something in an extension, you just disable everything and enable CLI, for example. CLI gives you as well. Um, but since PHP 5.4, you have a web server inside PHP CLI. Who knows about it? About it? It's very, very handy to test. I remember a Twitter blog post about how to use Drupal with this web server. It's very easy. Just to, you run it on the CLI. Uh, PHP Storm work, works with it as, as well now, so you don't have to install Apache or whatever else to test the script. So you just run it, take some time. You don't have to read everything happening here, only if you have an, uh, an, an error or something like that. If you don't know which option to use, you can find it easily in the documentation. Every single configure option is documented on, uh, in the PHP manual. Or if you have to use a custom extension like something from, from GitHub and some, or other repositories. few seconds left. That's, that's a, a tool called Auto Tools on, on Unix. That's something I really like, would like to kill. That's the worst tool I ever heard of, ever used before. And then you just run make, that will call a make file and compile all the files you, you, you selected. No, no, not, not if you disable everything. No. If you compile PHP uh, with every single extension on, in a virtual machine on my small laptop, so it's a, um, i7, but I still need like 10 minutes or something like that to compile everything on a single core. You can enable, if you have many core at home, you can use this option. For example, let's say you, you have a four core, minus J4, and it will use all the four cores to compile. It's not exactly four, four times faster, but it's definitely 30% faster. So you get your PHP version here on SAP I CLI PHP. Uh, I don't want the version, this is version. You can see now if it's com built correctly, it's uh, 547, 457. No, I, <laughs> I won't make it today with that. And that you can always check the time when the build was done. And now you can also check the built-in module if, because you don't get, a, um, no, I don't remember if you get, but you don't always get a uh, warning if one of the options did not work out. So you can also check uh, which uh, module uh, has been built, built in or not. But I don't remember if 5.4 if if has now an option if you con do a configure uh, something, you enable something, but it was not possible to enable it. I don't remember if you get a warning. On Windows you get it now, but uh, I don't remember. Uh, and just for the, for the record, I will show you now on Windows. Uh, yep. <laughs> you are right. That's my. Uh, it's a new box. I, I made aliases now. I have to say I have LS and so on on, on Windows and Unix because I keep uh, switching the command. So uh, the same thing is. The first thing I forgot to say is, but you can find it in the, in the readme, you have to do a build conf. So it will generate the configure script. 
then you exactly just like on Unix, and I do disable all and enable CLI. Only one option I do as well on Windows is I disable the thread safe mode. It's another story. We can talk about that later. And I enable the debug mode. Sorry? Oh, thank you. So, and the good thing on Windows, uh, I tried to port that to autoconf, auto tools, but I gave up. It was too painful. You got the summary directly after the configure line, so you know what you have enabled, which SAPI, which compiler you are using. I'm using the latest Visual Studio. I did not commit that path, so if you have 2012 now, it won't build. It won't run the configure, but tonight it will be, it will be possible. And which architecture? You can also build your 64 and so on. And then you can compile. Ah, yes. I will clean it up. Okay, I will let it build and go back to Unix in the meantime. Okay, so now we have the, our small PHP, minimalized, that, mean, that means no hot stuff, it's easy to test. And the same script I showed you uh, before. If you have any questions, stop me. This is a script, so the same as before. If you like to run it, I mean, everyone, I think, know how to run a script in the CLI. It works perfectly. Now let's see if we have a, if we have a memory leak here. First, I use no option, just to see if there will leak. It's a little bit faster to, to just run Valgrind uh, without any option, but you just see, for example, if you have in use at exit, zero bytes in zero block, that means we don't have a memory leak right now. But if you see one, you can use uh, other option. And like, uh, what was the name for the second one? Uh, for uh, I don't remember. Ah, yeah. Okay, so we can now just with S. No, we get a more verbose report, but still nothing. So I will just do as we don't have leak in PHP anyway. I will just create one. Yes, I know, but it's easier to make. Yeah, like I could, I could call leak, but it doesn't help for my demo afterward. <laughs> there is one. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we don't need that. <laughs> so, where is, um, am I in substring? No. Okay, here is the PHP function substring. You don't have to understand everything going on here, but it's very easy to, I will just create one here. So what I did is just to allocate some memories, one, one K. Just have to recompile, to be faster because it just want to compile string C. It's not hard, hard to do that, I mean, but if you do it a couple of times, it's very easy to see, oh, I have a memory leak, or maybe I just, just my code is bad, it's not about PHP being using too much memory and whatever else, and then you come in the game with xdebug to see, okay, if I use really too much memory, then where, how, and so on. And the integration with, between xdebug, PHP Storm, or oh, that's my favorite uh, uh, IDE, but uh, there are other ones, and yet, yet and then you use like xcache green and so on to, to visualize your memory usage. It's very easy to understand where you do a per application or using more memory and so on. Uh, so, okay. First, the fast version. Or almost faster. So, we have 1,024 bytes, obviously. And now, th when you have that, it's not very useful. So, the question is where the hell is the leak? So, that's where you get. Uh, I don't remember if I. Uh, it's a debug version. So, I do a full check leak. 
memory, full check for the memory leaks. And you get a very nice uh, report telling you exactly on which line in which source code you, are get, you did an alloc, which was not freed. That means and as an end user, within 10 minutes, you can send us the information with a small script telling us, hey guys, you have a memory leak here. And one of the, any, any core developers, me, Derek, uh, Stas, or anyone else seeing such a bug report with a small script, it gets fixed at usually in one, two days. Because it's very easy for us to fix when we have such things. Indeed, when you come and say, okay, I have Drupal 7, blah, 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 with 20,000 plugins and blah, blah, and you say, I have a memory leak, I think you can wait forever to get these leaks fixed. So the, uh, the, main, the main part, of, I mean, after this talk is really to attend Derek's talk to see how you can debug your script to create very uh, small reproduce script to uh, small, very, very small script so we can use it easily. Because we don't have the time or resources to, to debug with Drupal or Symfony or Typo3 or WordPress or whatever else. Any question until now? Yes? Uh, KDB is my next step. Oh, the question was, don't get there. <laughs> the question was uh, if we use GDB as well. So I will show you, GDB is a, a, C, a debugger for C and I think for other languages as well. You can use it with Xdebug, I think, too, not anymore. Anyway, it's a kind of, it's a, it's a, a debugger, like just like a command line debugger. You have a graphical front end as well. But we will use GDB to debug when PHP crash or when PHP uh, has some more uh, logic issues or design issues and we have to figure out what the flow PHP is, PHP, PHP is following. But to, de to de detect memory leaks and so on, GDB is not very, very useful. I mean, it's, it's, it's useful to debug afterwards why we have a memory leak because it's not always easy as it is now. So you have to use a debugger to, to, to see uh, where the, uh, memo the allocation happens, really. I will show how to, how to use it afterwards in the next uh, slide. I think I'm still in time. Yes. Oh, no. I have to hurry up a little bit. So, uh, so as you can see, it's very easy now uh, to figure out where it is. You copy this text in a bug report, and you, get, you can even fix it yourself. So many times you just see it in small function, you see uh, if we is missing or if we is missing, you can create a patch in two minutes and that's it. Who finds that difficult to do or easy? Nobody finds that easy? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I will just remove the leak so we don't have too many issues here. I won't do the demo on Windows, but you saw that to compile it is very easy. I mean, it's just as easy as on Unix. You only have to, except with, um, except if you use the latest Visual Studio, they change so many things that it's not, you need Visual Studio to compile PHP on Windows now uh, with, with, with 2012. If you use 2009 on, uh, on, on the old uh, Windows SDK, you can just download the Windows SDK and you can compile Windows. You can compile PHP or any libraries on Windows easily. It's not the case anymore now. But uh, on Windows, it, there is a tool called Memory Validator. Uh, for people working on PHP.NET, I can get the licenses as well. So you can, this is what you get. There is a couple right now, for example, in the five, uh, four, five, 543, there is a couple memory leaks in the registry ending stuff. This is what you get as a report tool. So you just do exactly the same as Valgrind. You call PHP with a command line or you attach to a service or to a process or to Apache or whatever else. And you just do a hook and just like Valgrind and give you all the reports. The good thing about memory, memory uh, validator, it also checks if all the handles like file handles, resources, image, bitmap, and whatever else you, you are using, or PHP is using, or external library are using. And you can figure out, for example, I found many bugs, for example, in Oracle libraries or MySQL in the beginning, because they have had many leaks, they are not closing files, and so on. And indeed, when you use MySQL 20, hour a day, 20 hours a day, uh, and you have handle leaks at the end of the week, at, at one point, the server just crashed. So it's a very handy tool. 
okay, the next step is also something happening quite often now if you are using for a 5.4 and APC uh, or some features with traits and, uh, traits and so on. That means working with Drupal 8 or Symfony 2. Uh, Segfault. Uh, the tool is what uh, you asked before, is JDB. And this is what you see. It's a bit small, but I will just show you now. The same demo, but using... Oh, I, I will make... The, the Windows version is pretty easy. So, uh, I will do the fast way to create a crash. So we have the substring. Let's say we have a, we have uh, something bad and we have a null, null pointer here. Oh, and oh, there is a bug in um, Visual Studio now. Uh, <laughs> no, I know. I forget to change it. Uh, I know what the bug is. It doesn't support this because we are adding uh, meta information to the library. And somehow the linker in Visual Studio 2012 doesn't support it. So it's compiled. And the difference is on Windows, you can have many builds inside the same directory. Uh, you can do that on, Win on Linux as well. Uh, I can show you after the talk. So I just build a debug one. And I have PHP here. And I will call my little script. Okay, I got a crash. And it doesn't want to use Visual Studio anymore. Okay. No, it should call the debugger directly now. I don't know why it doesn't do any, it anymore. Anyway, so usually what you get here, I will show you the screenshot after. Yeah, you get directly the crash, the, the application inside Visual Studio. I will show you the screenshot now. That's always the case, the case when I use the latest software I can get. So this is a screenshot. When a crash happens, just show you Visual Studio opens. Just show you a backtrace, which is a down right part of the screen. You can copy past as well that in, a bug, in the bug tracker. And where is the source code is? The good thing in Visual Studio is also you can, for example, if you see a bug and you see it directly on, uh, in the editor, you can change the code and it will compile live and you can continue the debugging. That means you just do an, uh, fix the bug, change the value, whatever else, it will do a live compiling and you continue the debugging where you were. It will take the same context and so on. That's a pretty cool feature. It's even better now in 2012 when it works. <laughs> But right now it's not uh, working very well. I have to check why. Uh, this is the, and now back to the Unix version. Okay, so uh, let me do the same crash. Okay, what I, uh, the same question what I did before is to reset the pointer. It's where the string will be returned. The string, the string you get from a substring is stored in STR. STR. So. So I call the script segmentation fault. We all have seen that in our logs or in the CLI or whatever else. You can do, again, using valgrind. It will tell, valgrind will tell, will tell you that you have some illegal access, as, as far as I remember. Yes. Uh, on the line, on the top here. 
That means it's, it's, telling, it's telling you that so you are trying to access a memory not allocated. And now, the problem is we, when you do a bug report, it's usually an OS with, with, such, thing, with such an easy bug, it's an OS for us as a back as a information, but usually we need a backtrace. The backtrace is what we have seen before with Visual Studio. So I will do the same now with GDB. I set the arguments, I mean what I'm, I'm giving to PHP as a, as a script. And now it, tell me, it tells me, it told me, okay, you have a sec fault here, and you can say BT for backtrace, and you get the same information as you had before. That means the same line, it's just a little bit less visible, but you have some plugins also where you can have highlight string and so on to, to see that better. And now you get directly a backtrace where the crash happened. It's not uh, mid, mid with uh, five four. It's a little bit harder to see where the f uh, crash actually happened because you have another kind of function call. But it's very very easy now to see to still see on the line string dot c twenty two seventy five. So you see where we and we see here. That's a call where we were. Uh, sorry, down, down there. That's a line uh, 2275. So using a simple JDB get the backtrace, you know exactly where the crash happened, and you can begin to, to debug. Now, how to debug when you have a complex issue? To really debug it, it's a little bit harder. So you have to learn C and something like that. But only with these steps, you can get one of your critical bugs for your projects or your production system fixed in very, very short time because we won't do that for you. I mean, to, to get a small script and so on. Uh, if you have any question, for example, to go further, how to use GDB uh, to do breakpoints and so on, you can either ask Derek or me uh, anytime per email or on the internal mailing list or at the conference here. As, uh, someone asked me if I can do a workshop or whatever else or hacking session to, with such things. Uh, we'll be available in, uh, tomorrow and uh, today for that. So I, I'm sorry, I just took a part of the question part. I mean, it's already 10 to two. So uh, do you have any question or on these two peaks or maybe on the first part of the talk? Or you, you, the, you can use the same tools with Apache as well. If you use Apache, you can call Apache using Valgrind or GDB as well. It's very well described on bugspeech.net how to do it. Any question? So the question is about another topic, which is certainly more interesting for us, <laughs> is which new features are coming to 5.5? It's nothing is decided right now, but one, a couple of things are certainly coming, is like generators, uh, getter setters, in which form we don't know, but new getter setters are certainly coming in. Finally, it's always the, you know exception in PHP? Okay, the finally keyword is already committed. Uh, let what I forget. There is many, many new cool stuff in YNTL for Unicode support and so on. Uh, you can see that. Uh, let me show you. If you go on the wiki, We don't have a, a direct link to uh, the IFC. <laughs> ah, we do. When you go here, I don't find it. You have a description of all IFC which are under discussion and voting phase, that means you are voting on it, and so on. Uh, array part is one of the new function, uh, something to use a new function for, for each in a way as a new list. It was not possible to use list before inside a for each. And some, a couple of things is the generators, it's like, you know, who use Python? 
for example, with yield and so on. That's something uh, you can see on, uh, on the IFC, wikipp.net IFC generators. There is one very cool thing. Uh, it's a .NET-like getter setter. I really love this feature. That's something uh, many, many developers ask us. And we are discussing now how the best way, what's the best way we can implement it easily. That means we have the flexibility of what we have in, dot in C Sharp. We show you here. Instead of simply declaring, for example, public hours and using the underscore, underscore, get, underscore, underscore, set, you can define a method directly as well. So you don't have to, to do this hedge use case, switch case to if blah, 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 or whatever else. You can do read-only properties very easily as well. And the question now is how to make it easier. We, for example, with only a read-only keyword and stuff like that. We are the question is, Derek was asking about this, this read-only uh, stuff. The question now is whether we should add another keyword called read-only to define a read-only property instead of, you, of not defining a setter or not define. This is a getter and setter. So you can, when you don't define a setter, that means the property will be read-only. So that someone on the middle will say, wait, oh, we can simply add a keyword called read-only and that's it. Like it's done, I think, in Java or C++, I don't remember, or one of the other do that. So, and this is the kind of features we are getting, plus a couple of performance improvement, improvement including on uh, Windows or Threat Safe uh, SAPI could be much faster uh, with 5.5 as well. Does that answer your question? Okay, any other question? Any kind of topic? Okay, PHP related, I mean. Yes, two times faster. Only, my only worry right now is, no, compatibility is 100%. As, as we said before is, through the uh, release process IFC, we don't allow backward compatibility breakage between releases. The next one with breakage will be a six, or whatever is a big one. There is maybe small stuff, very, very small, but like something like features we, you should not use, at least not in the last 10 years that may not work as well as before. Yeah, but we, I mean, see, if, there's a, if there are features from PHP 4, PHP 4 is dead, PHP 5 is dead, PHP 5 2 is dead, <laughs> and we, are, we made this really, I mean, I know Drupal, the same problem in WordPress, I got the same discussion with Word, WordPress guys, I say, okay, clean your mess. I mean, if you, if you are in production, <laughs> if you're in production and you could still realize on PHP 4 or PHP 5 zero features, you have a problem, much problem, much bigger than some small incompatibilities. And I to, I'm talking about security issues. So, the, but at, if you use 5.3 and you move to 5.4, you have no issue. The, you cut runs smoothly without issue. And uh, Debit may. This is actually something that Drupal use can help with a lot, right? Yeah. That's also one of the goals of because this talk. During the release cycles, we bring out lots of release candidates. Is this thing actually on? No, no but you can come here. Hey, David, come around. <laughs> By the way, here's someone from the QA team here, from Drupal, testing, testing team in Drupal, because what we have done for Symfony, uh, Doctrine, and many other projects, we are testing snapshot of PHP using released version of Drupal. Uh, we do that with Drupal as well, but we would like to test old version of Drupal to test with snapshot of PHP to see that everything is working fine. What Debix means is, for example, now we released uh, 546. Maybe we broke something, but we didn't know. That means the idea is to test the old Drupal version using all release candidates of PHP before we go final to be sure that we didn't break anything. 
We do that now with WordPress, Symfony, Doctrine, Propel, Typo3, and so on. So it would, it would be awesome to do that as well with Drupal. OK, I'm done. I'm, OK, yeah, it's already three. Sorry for uh, take some of your time. <clears throat>